Guys, I'm about to show you one of my most epic panorama ever. The workflow I'm about to show you is really a very powerful workflow in line for me. And at the end, I'm gonna be using Luminar Neo for something crazy. Uh, it's a bit of a surprise, stay until the end. All right, so here we are. This was a beautiful sunset in Paris. And I had this GFX 100S, one of a medium format camera, and my lens not, was not wide enough to capture this beautiful statue here on the uh, Place de la Concorde in Paris. So what I did is I just took a whole bunch of photos. I made sure that you know every photo had like about 30 percent, and um, and you know I mean, can you imagine every look at the resolution? Every photo is what every photo is almost 12,000 pixel by like every photo is a 100 million pixel it's crazy this is probably one of the biggest photo i've ever produced so i'm going to select all of that boom i'm going to right click i'm going to go to photo merge and i'm going to go to panorama now you really need a very strong computer to be a handle to do like a panorama with a medium format camera if you really want to learn lightroom i have this new book coming out called lightroom classic natural drama which i'm going to show you in this a demonstration of how to do it. If you want a reference, you can get the book for free if you pay the shipping. All right, so here we are, here we are. So when you do a panorama, you have different uh, projections. It's just different way of stitching photos. So you can go to spherical, which is kind of cool. And it's going to make like more of a panorama look. In this case, I think I want to go for that. Or you can go to perspective. And perspective is not going to work in this one because Perspective, you cannot not have objects which are too close to your lens, which was the case here. So I think I'm going to go to um, uh, spherical. But I have a problem. Houston, I have a problem. I made a mistake and I did not shoot the last photo here. I should have taken one more photo for the right side. So I'm going to use a magic. You see all these all this things here that's missing? I'm going to click on fill edge and Lightroom is going to use a technology called content aware fill and is going to create the missing pixel here. And I already have done that. And here is the result. So that's the panorama. You can see this like some stuff, which is a little weird here, but that's fine. And now it's time to do what I call the natural drama formula. And that's really covered in the book. I go in detail on every step. So step number one is exposure. So I'm going to open the shadows. I'm going to bring down the highlights. You've seen me done, do that a lot of time, but there's a few tricks in this video, especially at the end. Anyway, I'm going to hold on the option key. I'm going to crush the black like this, and that's going to make the photo going really from very dark. Uh, you want to have like pixel, which are hundred percent black. Look at the quality of this photo. Look at the details. Look, it, it, you can see the rain and I, it's on, I don't think I have taken a more sharp, and so detailed photo in my life. It's crazy. It's so huge. It's probably uh, like a 500 million pixel photo. Look at the resolution, 21,000 pixels wide. It's crazy. Anyway, you need a strong computer. I'm going to add some contrast to it. And uh, basically that's step number one, good exposure so I can see what's going on. Okay. Step number two of the natural drama formula is the white balance. So what white balance should we use for this one? Well, before we do the white balance, I want to go to profile. And because this was shoot with a Fuji, I love Fuji cameras. I have Sony, I have Fuji. I shoot with both of them. The Fuji have incredible profile. And back in the day, I used to shoot with something called uh, Mamiya 7.2. And I used to use a film called the Provia or Velvia. So I love the Velvia look. It's got a very magenta. Check this out. Are you ready? I'm going to use a Velvia profile and it's making the color a lot richer. So I choose that profile and then boom, I add, I'm going to go maybe to daylight or cloudy. Yeah, maybe cloudy is kind of cool. What you don't want to do is you don't want to use, lose the blue in the sky. I like my sunset to go from blue to warm. So I think let's see what shade is going to give me. I think shade's going to be too much. Yeah, shade, I'm losing the blue. So I think on this one, I'm just going to go to cloudy. And then I don't like, like the yellow has a lot of green in it. So I'm going to add a lot of magenta to kill the green. Yeah. And I'm going to add a bit more yellow, but I'm not done. So that's step number two is the white balance. Now, step number three is color refinement. So color refinement is you basically go to the U saturation and luminance section. In this one, I'm not going to do much because I really like the colors. 
So, um, but let's check it anyway. So what I do is I'm going to take that tool on the U and I'm going to click where it's kind of warm, like here, for example. And if I go up, it becomes very greenish. And if I go down, it becomes a lot more magenta. So I'm changing a little bit the sky to go a little more reddish. Okay. And then saturation, I love to make the sunset really pop. So I'm going to add a lot of saturation in the three first color here. Okay, I think I went a little too far on the U here. It's a little too red now. And we're gonna bring that back down a little bit. You know, and it's very subtle. I mean, it was such a great sunset. I'm trying to get it back. Where is the sunset? Okay, so that is step number three of the natural drama formula. We refine the colors. Now, step number four, and this one is crazy, and that is dodge and burn. But before to do a dodge and burn, this is really when I actually crop the photo. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna unable profile correction, see if it does anything. It does not. I'm gonna go to the crop tool and I'm gonna go 16 by nine and I'm going to crop it. Crop it, crop it, crop it. And uh, I wanna make sure it's straight. 16 by nine, I wanna really focus on the statue and on the obelix here. Also, it's gonna take out that little weird a thing that was created here in what in the pixel that I was missing. Boom. And now the time is for the dodge and burn. So I'm going to dodge and burn the photo. That's step number four of the natural drama formula. So what I do here is I am going to uh, make the sky a little darker on the gradient because you could use a new AI and select the sky, but I find that if you use a gradient, it's more natural. So I'm gonna take the linear gradient and I'm gonna basically burn the sky. Okay, I'm burning the sky. So I'm gonna click and drag and I'm gonna lower the exposure and it's gonna make the top of the sky darker. I think I'm gonna add a touch of blue in it in, at the same time. But you see the problem is that it's now making this a little darker. Now here's a little power tip for you. And this is a new feature that just came in Lightroom. I absolutely love this because now you see this whole waterfall, uh, not waterfall, water, whatever is, leave me in a comment and tell me what that is in English because I am French uh, and I don't speak very well English. Okay, I'm gonna go to mask and I'm gonna three dots, intercept mask with sky. By intersecting the mask with sky, check it out, boom. What it does, it only affects the sky and not the fountain. Yeah, the fountain, that's what you're looking for. Now I'm going to dodge the photo. Dodging means making it brighter, it's crazy. So I'm gonna go here, bam, I'm gonna use a brush. Make sure when a brush, the flow and density is in the 70s and I'm gonna boost a little bit the exposure and I just wanna make the uh, water brighter here, maybe here, make this a little bit brighter. I really love this part of the fountain. Now, I think by mistake, I touch the exposure, the overall exposure. I'm just gonna make it a bit darker. Yeah, something like that. And what I wanna do is I want to make this whole sunset come even more. And that's more dodging. Now, this is a little secret. When you have such an amazing sunset, and believe me, the only works if you have such a sunset, do not do this at home if you don't have a great sunset. You can go here and you go to the radial gradient and you make a little gradient where the sunset is and you add a bit of yellow and a bit of magenta and a little bit of saturation. Now this only works if there was truly colors there. If you didn't have colors, it's gonna look really weird. I see a lot of people doing this technique and it's really weird. Okay, at this point, I really like the photo. I'm like, wow, this is really good and it's time for the magic trick. So. The last step of the natural drama formula is to go to Photoshop. I could go to Photoshop and erase the bus, which is going to take a lot of time. So I'm not going to do that on this photo. I have a lot of other videos on how to erase anything in Photoshop. Look at the, the description of the video. I just might just add a bit of more contrast, boost the white, you know, I just do the final touches. And honestly, at this point, I could stop here. Probably one of my favorite photo of the last year. Really like the colors, but I have to be honest with you, I work with a gallery and the gallery keeps telling me, you know, the best selling photos are very, very strong. They have very, uh, a very strong color cast. They have, uh, you know, they really like, they really want me to use like Photoshop and heavy post processing. This is what I call the natural drama. But now I'm gonna go to Lumiere Neo to add a little je ne sais quoi to make it even more crazy. Now, if you don't like the very, like impactful kind of photo. If you don't like the photo that sells really well, 
do not watch this next part. Stop the video now. Please don't watch because you're, you're going to leave me a nasty comment. But if you really want to create an impact, if you want to sell this photo to the world, stay tuned. So I'm going to go to edit Luminar Neo. And by the way, you can get 10% off Luminar Neo if you use the code photo surge. Uh, you know, this is not sponsored by them, but you know, you just want to get 10% off. I do get a small commission. You do support this channel. If you do, this is more a Lightroom tutorial than a Luminar tutorial, but I got to show this to you guys. So here I am in Luminar. And again, usually I stop here. My gallery has been asking, says we want more impact, more color, more crazy because it sells better. So I'll show you. So you go to edit and I don't do much, but Luminario has some very powerful sliders. So you go to edit. It's a little slow because this is a literally a 500 million pixel photo and Luminar can handle it. I go to on hands and I just boost a little bit accent. Accent is just going to make the shadow open a little more. It's going to make it a little more saturation. Don't go crazy like this because that's too much, but a little bit of accent is good and a little bit of sky on a hanser. It's going to make the sky a little more darker, a little more boom, boom, boom. It's amazing. Now, Here's one of the secret slider. It's the landscape. And there is a slider called golden hour. If you use the golden hour, I love what it does to the, to sunset. It just makes the sunset pop. I love what it does to the sunset. I don't like what it does to the break here, but here's the magic trick. You, you ask, you, you know, you put some golden hour, then you go to masking, then you go to radial gradient and you make a big gradient and you make it. So it's only affecting the sunset. And look at that. Let's go back to adjustment and check it out before, after. See, it's just making the colors really pop, but around the sunset. Okay. And it's, you know, it's small things by small things by small thing. Usually I also like to go to structure. A structure is here. It's called structure AI. And I add a little bit of that. Okay. And then, and then I go to super contrast. Super contrast. It is amazing. It is incredible. And I do highlight contrast, mid contrast and shadow contrast. And that's going to make the colors go crazy. Okay. I could stop here. Let me show you. This is the before and the after. It really makes the photo pop. Now I think there's too much color. So I'm going to go to color harmony. And then that first slider is brilliant. If you go left, it's going to re-desaturate a little bit the photo. Just do it, but it's very strong. Just a little bit, a little bit goes a long way. All right, so I'm back and on the right side is a Lightroom natural drama version. On the left side is like the sort of over the top, but I didn't go more crazy. I could go even more over the top, but this kind of photo actually sells better on the left side with the Luminar Neo a little touch and on the right side. I kind of prefer the right side. Tell me in the comments which one you prefer. Uh, by the way, don't forget, if you use the code photo search, you can get 10% off Luminar Neo. Get my book, Lightroom Natural Drama. It's really like there's so many sliders in Lightroom. Just pay for shipping and you'll get the book for free. Link is under the video. And also I made this really cool video a while back on focus stacking. Check it out. Uh, it's really hard to get this crazy focus stacking photo from the start to the end. It's Lightroom and Photoshop. I think you're going to enjoy it. Au revoir.